Becoming a UX designer can be a very difficult journey, but once you're in, progressing in your career can be just as hard. And unlike all the beginner courses that we see, there aren't as many resources to help you move up that career ladder. In this video, I'm going to explain the differences between a junior designer, a midweight designer, and a senior designer, and give you practical steps on how to progress so you can prepare to become a senior designer. Hi guys, my name is Chilly and I'm a senior product designer based in London. I have seen many videos explain the difference between a junior designer and a senior designer. However, that is a big jump. The midweight designer role is not talked about enough. The jump from midweight to senior can be really big and unclear. Caveat, this can be different from company to company. So this is going to be based on my experience, the companies I've worked for and the experience of those around me. And as someone who contracts, I've worked for many companies. One of the biggest pain points for a lot of people is really understanding the difference between junior, mid and the senior designer role. Why it takes so long to become a senior designer and how to prepare. Use this video to plan your career progression. Sometimes you can get a promotion naturally just by being in a role long enough, but you can also influence a quicker career progression by being strategic. When I first started as a junior UX designer back in 2016, I was loving life. I worked at Netta Porter, the best company ever, and I really enjoyed going into work. I enjoyed the tasks I was given, I enjoyed working with my team, creating fun features, and I honestly thought that life would always be that rosy. I thought moving up in my career would be just as fun, but just getting paid more. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> Four years after that, I was a senior designer at Meta, which I considered my dream job. This was a combination of hard work and strategic positioning and having a strong network. Let's start with a UX job role. UX design is a very broad area and this is reflected in the naming of the titles. When you are looking for a job, there are so many different terms used for this job title. UX designer, UX UI designer, product designer, UX architecture, interaction designer, design system designer, growth designer is now becoming more popular, and also UX research. There are many specialities within UX design. Even though most of the time you expect it to be more of a generalist, depending on the company you work for or the projects that you're doing, it's not always possible to gain the experience and the deep understanding in every discipline of design to make you a specialist in any one of them. I have been a UX designer for more than eight years now. Even though I've built good design systems in the past, I have worked with specialist design system designers and that is a whole different ball game that has made me realize that I can't call myself a design system designer. Each discipline of UX could take a decade to master. We're going to break down the different levels, not necessarily going into the specialities. As you move up your career ladder, UX design becomes less about screens and more about the holistic view of the business goals and the whole ecosystem. Unless, of course, you become a specialized UI designer or design system designer. The main difference is years of experience, but let's get into details for each level. So junior designer. When you're a junior designer, your projects have a smaller scope and don't take as long. So you might be put in charge of designing a page of a product or a small feature, or an end-to-end -end journey where usually the wider issues that affect that feature have already been solved. When I was a junior designer, I usually focused on one feature or user journey at a time, not really focused on the holistic business goals. I was also only focused on one project at a time. I didn't have to juggle multiple projects at one time. Also, as a junior designer, you can be tasked with creating final polished designs, which is where you can really show your strength, especially in comparison to the senior designers who are expected to have impact on the wider business and business goals, which requires more higher level thinking. This is more product strategy thinking. As a junior designer, you'll be expected to create final designs of those screens and also experiment with new design ideas to improve the look and feel of the product. This is why I always advise new designers to really focus on improving their UI as the best way to get your first job. That's how I was able to easily move from graphic designer to UX designer. I was really good at making designs look good and polished, which made me an asset to the team. As a junior designer, you also have a lot of support and have people to rely on. And you are learning the skill of reaching out to the right people at the right time. It's a good idea to talk to your manager about your improvement plan. Look at the skills outlined by your company policies and make a plan of how you can move from junior designer to midweight designer. Next is the midweight designer. This is where you have around three to five years of experience, slowly starting to take more and more responsibility and working autonomously. You still have the support of a senior designer. You have to be good at prioritizing your work as you start to work on multiple projects at once. 
You'll be expected to present more to the wider teams and to clients and have confidence in your ideas and explaining them when questioned. You'll start to lead collaboration efforts more with engineers and other teams. As I mentioned before, the transition from junior to mid can be based on the time you have spent in the role. I became a mid grade designer after two years and I was lucky enough to be in companies that gave me the right learning experiences to progress. But you can do it too. The key is to start understanding the wider business journey outside of your product and outside of your team. This means having a really good understanding of strong personas and journey maps. These enable you to solve complex problems and breed innovation. Yes, I know there's a lot of people out there who believe that personas are useless. And in my opinion, that's because they're not creating them correctly. Let me know in the comments if you want a video on personas. At this stage of your career, it's important to continue to learn and start finding your path to your speciality. Next is the senior designer. That's around five to seven years of experience. At this point, you're expected to be more of an expert in whatever domain of UX you chose to specialize in. You might be really good at creating design systems, animating, solving complex problems, or an expert in a specific industry, having a good understanding of the customers and how the industry works. My speciality is B2B SaaS and internal tools. A good senior designer is expected to bring impact to the business beyond your designs. Having a good understanding of business strategy and how designs can impact profits is important. You will be expected to juggle multiple products with different scopes. You could be working on a project that needs to be handed off to engineers within one week or planning ahead for projects that you're going to be working on within the next few months. So knowing how to prioritize and knowing how to plan ahead is really important. As a senior designer, you're not just waiting for projects to come to you, you're also seeking out problems to solve. So this involves knowing how to communicate your ideas and your vision, contributing to the team roadmap and team planning. You're expected to work more independently with less people to rely on than you did in previous stages of your career. You will be the go-to person for design decisions. You'll also be expected to manage the team. I say that in quotes because a lot of team have PMs or business analysts or delivery managers, but you will be expected to have an idea on what all the engineers are working on to ensure that there are enough designs completed for everyone to be working on and that engineers are not waiting too long for designs. You'll also be working more closely with the product manager as a partnership rather than before where your product manager might be in charge. An important skill to have as a senior designer is stakeholder management. As you're now leading design efforts, you'll be expected to communicate these ideas and get buy-in from the wider business. You will need the confidence in your vision and not be afraid to push back and have difficult conversations. At this point, you will be less reliant on the step-by-step -step design process and more on your experience and your intuition to effectively solve problems. Due to the years of your experience, you will have a strong personal design process and you should have a good toolkit of methodologies and exercises that you implement into your project. You may have less people to fall back on. You might have a design manager that you check in with. However, you are in charge of your project. So how do you become a senior designer? I've broken the key senior designer skills into five categories. Vision and goals, where you define the long-term vision for your product and how it fits into the wider business strategy. Audience and value proposition, understanding key user needs and the market landscape to identify opportunities. Product features and roadmap, defining which features are built to create maximum value through lean design. Data and growth design, using data to set the right goals and to measure success and impact. And number five, soft skills. Presenting your work, advocating, collaborating, and one of the most important skills for a senior designer, stakeholder management. I will be launching a mentorship program for those who are interested in gaining these skills to supercharge your career and become a senior designer. It will be live lessons where we dive deep into each chapter and you can grow your network with a strong design community and also have the chance to ask me all your design questions. I'll be doing a free webinar on Sunday the 10th of November. Sign up to my mailing list for more details. This webinar is free and it's open to everyone. So even if you're not ready to be a senior designer, come along. But it will be especially valuable for midweight designers who are looking to become senior, newly senior designers who want to become more confident and thrive in their role, and those looking to start contracting. Contracting is a great way to boost your income into the six figures. So if you fall into these roles and want to prepare for a successful 2025, make sure you sign up. 
If you enjoyed this video, help me out by hitting the like button and let me know in the comments where you are in your career, what your goals are for the next year. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you at my webinar. Thank you.